Hey guys, Zero here again with uh, another unboxing. D and D Thursday for me. It's D and D Thursday um, for you. It could be Tuesday or Wednesday or <laughs> whatever. Um, but I wanted to show you guys. I just some some miniatures, D and D miniatures. I just picked up um, from my local Games Plus, uh, semi-local store Games Plus. I had um, around the holidays. I went with my family and we went and bought a bunch of board games and. You know, I bought some some um, some minis and some some tools and stuff like that, and it it, it granted me uh, holiday coupons that they had given around. I didn't know they were giving them. They were just, it's just one of those things. Like I want, I spent, and at Games Plus, every time you spend a hundred dollars, you get ten percent off. Um, whether that's a voucher that they give you, or whether that's a ten percent off immediately of your purchase, uh, if it's qualified, you know they'll they, you can fill your name out on a card and they have the stamps you know that they put on the card to let let them know how many stamps you have to go before your next hundred and the more you spend obviously the more you get off uh, get off. and uh, I had just gotten I we spent a lot of money we like three hundred dollars or something we got like thirty dollars off and then they gave us these vouchers these holiday vouchers that I had to spend within a certain amount of time and I also had another ten dollar off or ten percent off voucher because of how much I spent. So anyway, I went back to Games Plus this past weekend and I bought, I, I spent my coupons, you know. <laughs> um, I'm impatient sometimes when it comes to that, but my wife and I went out there and I bought some stuff and I bought a bunch of D&D miniatures. Um, I was going to pick up some 40k stuff, but there's not a lot left on my 40k list to get, believe it or not. I know that, I know it sounds ridiculous. And it is in my mind still, but there's not a lot left on my list to get. Like, I have some models, some small models here, and some big models there, and that's that's it. Like, unless they completely hit us with a brand new Slanesh Emperor's Children army. What's up, Cooch? Um, I'm, I'm close to being done buying for my Chaos army, my Tyrant. I need a couple things for my Tyrant army, but that's... It's already an apocalypse size army. So anyway, I, I, I digress. So I picked up some D&D models. <laughs> um, so we're going to take a quick look at these. Um, There's just stuff on my list that I wanted to get and get out of the way. You know what I mean? Like, and I, know it, it, I don't say get out of the way as in a, a negative. You know, like, like I don't mean that in, you know, I'm, uh, get it done. I mean it in like... I gotta get this stuff. <laughs> I gotta get this stuff so I can get it ready so when I actually run my full on campaign in the jungles of Chult, I have cool models to throw at the players. Because I love models, I love miniatures, I love maps, I love if I could do 3D terrain, I'll do that too. So you know, I encourage whoever's listening, if you love D D and you love minis and you love all this stuff, use it, do all of it. Just there is no such thing as going too far or going overboard. My one of my good buddies. The overboard DM has proven it time and time again, man. Just do what you love to do. Make it fun for you as well as your players. You know what I'm saying? If your players are totally against miniatures and maps and scenery, and they all they want to do is theater of the mind, they're not your players. They're, they send them somewhere else. You know, don't, you know, I'm not saying that they're bad players. I'm saying they're not your players. Send them somewhere where they can get what they need from a GM that is giving them that type of game. You, if you're into miniatures, if you're into scenery, if you're into maps and terrain and all that cool stuff, don't stifle that. Don't stifle it because your players are, mm, I don't need miniatures, you know. It's stupid. We don't, it's too much work, blah, 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 blah. And that, you know what? It's not work if you love what you're doing. But anyway, let's get to the minis. <laughs> so I picked up a cute tangent. Uh, I keep... <laughs> anyway, I picked up the Young Black Dragon from uh, Dungeons and Dragons Nalzer's Marvelous Miniatures. Ha ha! I haven't gotten the red one yet because it's not available. It's supposed to be dropping in May. It was originally supposed to drop in March. Now it's, they're saying not till May. So I don't know what the f's going on with this dragon. But yo, Wizard of the Coast, what the heck's going on with these dragons, dude? Get up! Get the red one out so you can start making bigger dragons. So you can start making the gargantuan versions. Redoing the gargantuan versions of these dragons. And I know we have those old ones, but they're ugly. And they're crap. So redo them like you did these and, and put them out for us. And then the colossal red. Don't be afraid. They'll buy it. People will buy it. I'm, I'm, 
I'm telling you. Also picked <laughs> another set of the Reaper Bones um, graveyard fencing. Gra what is it? Graveyard fence? Yeah. Graveyard fence set. Now, why, Zero? Why'd you pick up two of those, man? That's, that's a lot. Yeah, it is. But I have a big big amount of cemetery stuff in my the in my scenery collection like it's it's huge i mean i'm i have so many gravestones and and, and statues and things for i love cemeteries man i got graveyards and it's just cool man you're playing fantasy tabletop games like age of sigma or warhammer fantasy or shit even D, &D. hashtag not for kids um come on the graveyard is awesome man like that's an awesome battlefield to fight over like that. You're lost if you're not doing it. I'm just saying. Um, in keeping with the graveyard, I picked up one of the sets from the... Because um, I was going to pick up the booster set from the Kickstarter that had the graveyards in it. But I can't find it for under $90. So I just figured I'll just get the pieces little by little. So I picked up the graveyard golem that came in that set. I really think this is a cool looking, I mean it's an earth, like an earth golem, you know, stone golem or what, you know, stone, whatever you want to call it. It could be an earth elemental actually, you know, an evil one, even though they're not technically evil. But it's such a cool model, we're gonna crack that open. And I'll, I'll stick them together so you guys can see what he looks like. Because he's really, really cool. And you guys gotta see it. And Dan, I picked up this cool guy. I saw a video of it. And I just, I was like, man, I got to get that model because it's just a cool painting opportunity. And it's just a big model. So I really, I mean, I like big models. And when it comes to a group like a DD and d party, you know, I like throwing big models. Because you, when you put the model down on the table, everybody's like, what? You know, and it, it could be a weak model. But because it's so big, everybody's like, oh, my God, it's a, it's a cool looking model, whatever, whatever. But I picked up a Shipwreck Revenant. Now, this, I've seen, I saw this model on... Black Magic Craft, Jeremy actually painted this model and he did a lot of cool stuff with airbrushing. Like he did a lot of cool techniques, made it look like it was glowing, and, you know, like at night with the lights on, like it's, it's got some lights hanging and stuff. And he just did a really cool job with it that made me want to buy this model. Like I, good job, Jeremy. Appreciate you. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just a cool looking, like a, a very interesting creation. Like I, the artists over at Reaper, I mean, they're great. Their hands are tied. Obviously, they can't do D and D things anymore, and they can't, you know, the likenesses of D and D models. So a lot of their new Kickstarter monsters are starting to be more unique monsters, you know. Which it's whatever. I mean, some I like, some I don't. But some of their designs are just off the charts. And this guy right here, this this figure is one of them. It's definitely definitely one of us. Excited to get. And then lastly, I picked up the uh, Hangman's Gibbet. Gibbet? 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 I don't know. I don't know what but anyways, it's a, it's a little platform where they put people up and they hang them. You know. This is going in our um, uh, Warhammer Fantasy Town, Age of Sigmar Town, my D&D Town, whatever. This is going in there because it's just a few little things left to get to adorn the town. Like I got a well way back. I got a fountain. Which you guys can see that video. Um, and then and then this little guy here because I don't know I feel like it's a dark and gloomy town and they probably would hang people there like this just they're still dealing with that type of justice you know what I'm saying I mean if they don't kill them outright they hang them it's a little it's a little small one you know I mean I would like to, I would like to have gotten a bigger one with multiples but it it doesn't need to you know for our town it's just that's just scattered terrain at the moment. That's just something that's going to get in the way of soldiers moving and stuff and miniatures moving around on the table. So it's not necessarily uh, a set piece or anything like that. It can be for Dungeons and Dragons, for sure. Any 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 little piece of scenery can be a set piece for like a MacGuffin or an objective or a goal for Dungeons and Dragons. So I'll be using that for that as well. Try to get as much out of it. But let's get over to the table. And then I'll stop rambling. And we'll crack these things open. And I will try to put them together. Um, I'll, you know what? I'll put them together off camera. I mean, we'll crack them open. And then I'll put them together off camera so it doesn't take up all your time. And then we'll take a quick look at them and I'll tell you what I think. Um, one thing I didn't get when I was at Games Plus and I should have gotten, now that I look at these models, 
is bases. I did not get bases in Reapers, infamous for not coming with any bases. The Dragon for D&D has one, but the Reapers do not have them. Now, I do have some big bases lying around. I might be able to annex for that, but I really think that the Revenant needs his own nice big base. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful model. So, anyway, let's get over to the table, man. I'm taking too much of your time, right? No, nah, no, nah, that's why you're here. You're here for this. This is it, right here. Anyway, let's get to the table. We'll crack these bad boys open, and we'll get rolling. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, all right, all right. Let's take a look at these miniatures. Maybe you guys have seen them before, maybe you haven't. I don't know. We'll see if it's worth the money I spent. Or the free coupons I got. <laughs> see if it's, if it's worth that. And let's start with this bad boy here, the Young Black Dragon. Now, just real quick, um, this is the fence set. I'm not going to open this right now. Um, I already did an unboxing of this. I'll put the link in the description for that video. Uh, you guys can check that out and you'll see it's in one of my other D&D hauls. Um, but we'll take a quick look at this guy and some of the other models. And then right off the bat, I noticed something with this model. Um, and I noticed it for the ones that they had there, so it's not like I could pick a better one. But the wings are like really scrunched together. I don't know if that's packaging or what, but it doesn't look like it's supposed to be that way. It just looks like that's just eventually how it ends up. You know, so we're going to get in this. Oh, no... Twisty ties. Good. Friggin' hate twisty ties. There's cardboard. The backing is just like a, looks like a cavern. Looks like a dark cavern. And I'm not sure if all the backings are like that, but it's real quick also. There he is, all black and dragony. There you go. In case you wanted to see that. Some people do, some people don't. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, did I lose? Did I not? Ah, he came with it. I was about to lose my crap. His base. Just want to make sure we have it. There's his stand. Another rocky, like outcropping, um, which is unfortunate because it should have been like water or swamp or something else. Eh, it is what it is. I mean, I guess it's small enough. Like most of the other ones cover enough of the base. I could actually make water around it, I guess, if I wanted to, or shrubbery or swamp or something. Well, here he is. He doesn't stand. Mm -hmm couple things about this dragon though a couple little things little little things the face is phenomenal it's got a good looking face you know it looks like a black dragon ah, it's got the forward horns so this one's a little crooked I might have to heat him up see if I can get him his frill on his neck is really really small like really freaking small when it should be you know should be bigger not huge but bigger he also does not have one on his tail He's got his little spiky point, his little barb thing, which he does have. But if I'm not mistaken, the black dragon has a frill on its tail. I missed opportunity, I guess. And there's his underbelly. He does have his webbed feet. He's very accurate, very, very close to accurate. I mean, maybe, like I said, a little few nitpicky things. That's just me, but then you see how bent that is. And how bent that is, that is not supposed to be like that. He should probably have these wings out here like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat them up, uh, some hot water. Try I'll try the hot water technique first. If that doesn't work, then I will. Look, it's actually... It's actually... You see how it goes back like that? It'll go back to its reset. Um, I'll try hot water first. If that doesn't work, 
then I will be trying a blow dryer. Uh, so I usually find that blow dryers is usually the end all that'll work primarily um, for these types of models. And his base goes in there like that. So he's definitely he's definitely coming down for the attack. Uh, you can see there. And he looks like he's stalking whoever, which is kind of cool. I mean, black dragons don't really like to fly in combat. They like to be on the ground. They like to be in the water, you know, where they can take advantage of all their abilities and all their things. But nonetheless, they're all flying. And it's just, it's just one of those, you have to, you have to accept things for these miniatures. But there you go. Young black dragon. I just can't wait to get the red one. Then I'll have all of them. And then they'll be complete. And I'm not sure if I want to get the uh, metallics. I don't I don't I don't see a need to have metallics miniatures. I have some. I have a few uh, like one or two metal miniatures from Reaper back in the day that I have for my metallic, but I don't think it's 100% necessary because they're good guys and I mean Unless you're planning on giving the party a dragon to use, it's really, you know, that should be an NPC kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. Yeah. So here's the two parts for the gibbet. And they're made out of the Reaper Bones material. You can see that the, the noose, the hangman's noose is all bent. So, and then the, the pole itself is actually warped a bit right here on the spine. So we're going to have to, we'll have to uh, warm that up to get all those parts to sit right. So it looks like the wind is blowing the hell out of it. And here's the podium or stage or soapbox or whatever you want to call it. And it's got some pretty good texture. It is that bones material. It's really hard, but it's bones material. And here's your steps. And you can see the wood grain. I, I hope it's showing up on the camera. I, my little LCD screen doesn't do the, uh, it does kind of. But there's a trap door where the dude falls through. And I, mean, I guess it's just like one of those little kicky levers, you know? You, you, eh, and then the door falls and then the guy hangs. So there we go. Pretty cool. Like I said, I would have liked a bigger... I've seen some bigger ones where it had like multiple uh, gibbets, but this is not bad. This is... it's It sets the... the um, the atmosphere it sets the atmosphere for what this is for you know what what the purpose of this is so that's not too bad it's about right he fits on there pretty good I mean it's an Imperial Guardsman but whatever I mean if he were to hang there'd be the noose there but see, it's bowed, so once once I actually reshape it, it'll sit right there, right? And then he drops, and it'll snap his neck. So it's not too bad. It's pretty scale, pretty or pretty close to scale, I think. Um, that's a 25 mil or 28 millimeter uh, figure. So, but he's about the size of a D&D &D guy. So, because he's small for a 28, like Imperial Guards are small. But there you go. That is the uh, Reaper Bones Hangman's Gibbet gibbet whatever and then we have the graveyard golem let's crack this boy open i love the reaper bones line i mean look at the price on this guy you know what i'm saying like if you could can you imagine what this guy would cost in pewter you know it'd just be ridiculous so we'll look at the parts and then I'll throw him together with some uh, with some sticky tack. Got a little baby face statue there. That's creepy as f. Got gravestones all in them. It looks like he's gonna have wings, but they're not really wings as they are <laughs> fencing. <laughs> parts of a fence 
and the fencing kind of looks like the fencing from the cemetery set so with the exception of these little curly cues these nightmare before christmas looking curly cues there well, that's pretty cool and we've got the different arms that go in the different spots i wonder if they'll stay in there probably not no it won't stay so we'll use some There he is. Kind of looks a little derpy, if you ask me. But, I mean, it, it makes its point. It's got a little angel statue there for an arm. And there's obviously a gravestone. So not not terrible. Unique enough to be, per, like, unique enough for me to buy it. Definitely justify me buying it. I, I like the look of it. Uh, it's a little derpy, like I said. But it's it's enough to freak everybody out when you bring it on the table. You know, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's, oh, what do we do with that? You know, how do we, it's a different version. Like, you could you could just use a stone golem, you know, the way they draw them. And it just look like stone statue dudes, you know, with flat heads or whatever. I, I personally don't like that look. I mean, so that, that, that could be a stone golem. Or it could even be if, uh, a construct or an elemental, if you really wanted to push it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could. You could do a construct or an elemental with that guy, so it's pretty cool. Here we have the Shipwreck Revenant. I'll show you guys the parts, and then we'll pause the video, and I'll put him together, and we'll get him going. That's the back of the box for Bones is Storm Giant. I believe that's it. No. Storm Giant. That's a Storm Giant. Or Reaper's version of a Storm Giant. I mean, I guess it could be whatever you want it to be at this point. Right? But it looks like a Storm It looks like a Storm Giant. Painted in blue with green hair and, you know, the armor and the sword and stuff. It's not a Cloud Giant. Yeah, yeah, it's Storm Giant. Whoop. I lost the part. Oh no! It's his Ooga Booga mask. You know, like from Crash Bandicoot. A tiki mask. But it's not a tiki, John. I know that. So shut up. There's this, yeah, this is an arm. <laughs> or it looks like an arm. And he's got a cannon on there. He's got a lantern hanging. It's just so cool, man. And you can see it's all warped. It's all, you know, whatever from the packaging. But I'll fix I'll put that back together. And there's like a lifeboat there. You know, and the cannon and its rigging. It's its base. More. It's got barnacles everywhere. You can see there. Very cool. Very, very cool um, painting opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just got a really unique... Uh, look to it. This is the body. Let's get all this stuff off the screen. Guy here. Guy here, monkey. Get, get. It's got the helm. There's a big old keg right there. Another part of a ship. It just, oh my god, there's a crow's nest, part of the mast. Look at his face. So you could either leave it with the face, or you can put his Ooga Booga mask on, I guess. Unless that's not the face, unless it's just part of the model, and the Ooga Booga mask goes somewhere else. Maybe, I don't know. I'll have to look, I'll have to investigate. There you've got look at all the detail on there. Just an incredibly good looking model. Even if you know, and you're here to buy this just for the painting opportunity. I mean, that's it's got a lot of detail, a lot of nooks and crannies to paint up. You know, is that a yeah? It's a dead man right there. That's cool. So cool. Let's see where this arm would go. Uh, 
Oh, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that's where the Ooga Booga mask goes. Okay. I thought this was the front, but that's the back. Huh. Cool, 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 cool. Here's the other arm with a very crooked harpoon gun. Now, I could probably leave this and get away with it being, you know, call it warped or whatever. But I just, I don't know, it just bothers me. There's the anchor. Or part of the anchor. And giant harpoon. Pretty sharp. More shipwreck parts. Excuse me, we don't know what that is there. Is that another cannon? It looks like, well, I don't know. It's just another piece of maybe mast. But there's a ton of barnacles in there. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. And then here are his legs. <clears throat> and this, again, is like a lot of parts. There's a little chest there. A little treasure chest. Which is cool. My buddy Hate likes that. Hate, there you go. He got another chest. <laughs> Part of it looks like the ra the railing there, the banister. Maybe even part of like the captain's cabin type thing, you know. Huge mast parts it looks like. Or um, support beams for the inside of the ship. There's a mast there. You can tell that's part of a mast. It's all cracked and rotted. They just took a lot of time putting a lot of things in here, which is really, really cool. There's a barrel in there, stuck in there. <laughs> Gives it a lot of character, you know what I mean? Even Oh, there's the mast head. She's stuck on the front there. That's freaking cool. Very, very cool. Yeah, this looks like part of the captain's cabin. <clears throat> it's got a little window there. Right there. Very, very cool model. God, like... A lot of credit to the designer of this model. Um, very, very thought, well thought out and intricate. Oh, look, another little cannon. This is like those little harpoon guns that sit on the top. This is a deck gun, basically, is what they call that. Little tiny deck gun. Not sure where it goes. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Uh, I'm sure it goes somewhere up here. Yep, yeah, right there in that little hole right there. Right there. Pew pew. That's the pew pew gun. But there you go. That is the uh, shipwreck revenant. We'll pause for a second. I'll sticky tack him together and rob your uncle Fanny's rant. <clears throat> Alright, guys, here they are um, the revenant and the graveyard golem. Um, I'll hold it because his top is really, even with the blue tack, he's really, really heavy. So here he is. Um, <laughs> it's almost like he's holding the harpoon gun. But I know what you mean. It isn't what it is. It's, it's bowed because of the warpage. But he's got the cannon arm. And there's his mask. And we've got the little deck gun up there. And that's pretty cool. Really cool design. You gotta give it props. Uh, I think... It'll fit on a huge base. I think it'll fit. Let's see. Just barely. Just barely fits on a huge base. I mean, we're talking like barely edge to edge there, you see? Um, I mean, I guess I can consider this a huge model. Uh, it, <sighs> I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. This dragon is a huge model. Right? And then this guy is a huge model. I almost feel like this is a gargantuan. But I... I the D&D scale is just funky. So, I mean, I don't know. You tell me what you guys think. Gargantuan or huge? Um, that'll determine what base I put him on. Because I just, I just want it to be functional and... Like I said, he barely fits edge to edge on this base. So, I mean, I could get a huge base for him. And what size is this? I don't even know how many millimeters this is. 
70 millimeter base. So three by three, uh, nine, nine squares, which is uh, huge. Um, 70 millimeters, three inch by three inch. So he can technically fit on that base. I mean, it's, it'll be one of those things where, you know, the model's huge, but he's on a tiny little base, the, the barest minimum size base. And then this boy, this bad boy, he's pretty cool. Like I said, he's got, he's got wrought iron wings. So it's pretty cool. It's pretty menacing looking. Now let's see how he fits on the huge base. And he fits. See, to me, this guy, this, this, this guy is pushing a huge base. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy's a huge model. He should be on this base, right? Like, that's, maybe it's just me, but this T-Rex is on a huge base, right? Like, it's just, it just, it just doesn't, I don't know, it's weird. Like, their whole sizing issue is weird. This is definitely a huge model, though, to me. This this guy should actually be on a bigger base. He should actually be bigger, but they made him small because production costs and whatever. But this is definitely a huge model. So this guy is not this. Definitely not a huge model. He's got to be gargantuan at least. So yeah, he's he's gonna go on a gargantuan size base. But there you go, guys. That's my D and D miniatures haul uh, for this week. And Stay tuned, I'll be doing more as I get more minis. Um, I Again, I didn't open this one because I already did the unboxing for that. But let me know in the comments what you guys think of these miniatures. If you have them, you have any concerns, complaints. Um, if um, you think it's something you want to add to your collection or any of these guys, I mean, I'm like I said, I'm a fanatic of graveyards and cemeteries, so that's why I go for that kind of stuff. Um, the Shipwreck Revenant is just a cool, cool, cool model. Like, I don't, I'm definitely going to use it as something in D&D, whether it be a construct, a golem, something. This is just too cool not to use, you know, and it's gigantic. It's just a big, intimidating looking model. I mean, it could be a good, it could be a good model. It could be, you know, it could be definitely something to help the crew. You know what I mean? Like, that, definitely something I would be, I wouldn't mind throwing on the side of the players. You know, I mean, it looks, he, look, he looks happy. He doesn't look angry and evil. He looks, he looks happy. Now, if you turn him around and look at the, the guy on the back, that guy's angry. Like, that guy, he's mad that he's even there. He's that's like a tiki. Now, that looks like the Crash Bandicoot tiki head guy. You know what I'm saying? That, that ooga booga. He floats around and gives you health or gives you in, uh, invincibility. But that guy looks, I mean, he just looks happy. He just looks, he's just happy to be around and shoot cannons for the group. Like he's, you know, he'll stab people with his harpoon for you and, you know, he'll trance along, splashing water everywhere because he's got to be dripping with water, right? And barnacles popping off all over the place and all manner of sea life creepy crawling onto him. Come on. But I, I mean, I guess he could be a bad guy too. I guess, I guess you could, depending on what angle you point the point the face. Happy, angry, happy, angry. So, <laughs> like I said, I, I enjoy these. Um, let me know if you guys enjoy these um, uh, unboxings with these miniatures. And I mean, everybody likes the Nalzers miniatures. And like I said, the Reaper miniatures are a little bit odd, a little bit off, but they're cool. A lot of them are so cool, I I can't help but pick them up. But let me know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Also, um, check us out on our Discord channel. Put the little guy right here. Um, you know, tell them Zero sent you. It won't count if you don't tell them Zero sent you. Um, but, you know, we got a lot of creative people over there. People do 3D printing stuff and uh, dungeon masters and crafters. We've got diorama builders. We've got um, model builders, 40K players, you know, RC builders. That's me. And then Gundam guys, which is basically me. Um, but yeah, just let them know Zero sent you. And as always, guys, like, subscribe, share, um, so I can keep these going. You know, we can keep keep making videos like this for you. And again, I, I you know, it's like Cujo says, I buy, I spend this money so you guys don't have to if you don't want to. Um, you get a look at these things before you buy them. So there you go. All right, guys. 
As always, thank you for watching. Hey guys, real quick, uh, I forgot to add. Um, to actually put these guys together, just to hold them together while I was doing the video, I used this Loctite uh, Fun Tack. It's like blue tack, um, poster tack, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a sticky putty. You peel it off, you knead it like, uh, like green stuff or dough or whatever. You put it on your area there and then you put your piece together and it holds it together. Um, and you can use it for all kinds of stuff. I mean, like I said, they use it for poster tack and things like that. But I wanted to give a shout out to my buddy JD over at uh, It's a Critical because he was the one that suggested using this stuff. Because I used some other poster tack that was really crappy. I got it from like, I don't know, Home Depot or some crap or something. I got it somewhere really cheap. Michael's. I got it from Michael's and it was just cheap. It's called poster tack, but it was really, really cheap. It wouldn't even hold um, these posters up to the to the wood here. It did just fall right off. But this stuff is phenomenal. So this is this is great stuff here. Um, and it, once you're done using it, you just pull it, peel it off, knead it back up, and put it right back in the package. Um, so just want to let you guys know. I, I definitely like this product. It's definitely something worth checking out. Um, like I said, it's Loctite Fun Tack mounting putty. I got this from Amazon for like three dollars shipped. So, I mean, this is gonna this is gonna be a while before I go through all this. Um, but yeah, just so you know, a heads up. It's one of the many tools we use for uh, gaming, miniature war gaming, miniatures, whatever. All right, guys, thanks for watching.